Welcome to this episode of Well.com. I'm Adam Stretch. I'm the program coordinator and welding instructor here at Pellissippi State Community College in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today we've got a little viewer request on welding hoods. This is not a review of a welding hood. There's lots of those out there. You guys can check out the different hoods that are available. But as you get into your, into your welding career and you've, you've invested in a piece of equipment, learning how to set it up properly and make it work. Right, we decided we wanted to weld. We've got a pair of steel-toed boots. We've got jeans. You got yourself a nice welding jacket, some gloves that are appropriate for the process, whether you're doing stick, mag, tig, you know, match the gloves to the thing that you're gonna be doing. But then you get a welding hood. Inside your welding hood comes with a, a nice little carrying case. You'll store it in here. For those of you that are students or that are not using your hood very often, do not just leave it inside this bag for months on end and expect that it's gonna work. The capacitors in here, they, they need to be charged up. So if they die, sometimes you can set this out in your driveway and get one more life cycle out of it. But let some light get into this. So, you know, if you know that you're not gonna be welding for a couple of months, don't just shove this in the bag and throw it in the back of the closet. Keep it out, keep it accessible. Get it out and take it outside once in a while. Let those capacitors maintain their charge. Inside the box, when you buy your, your welding hood, you're gonna have warranty paperwork. Make sure you get that filled out. Just in case anything goes wrong, you've gotten your paperwork filled out. Only takes you a second. There's an instruction manual. There's a lot of information in here and parts lists. In case you lose or break something on the hood, you need to replace it. There's also some operations. You'll find small lenses, and large lenses in the pack. This particular Viking, this is a Lincoln Electric 3350. This is their Viking series. Comes with five of these outer lenses and two of these inner lenses. These are the clear piece that covers the ADF or the auto darkening filter in here. If you're going to take a weld test somewhere, replace this. If you've been stick welding in your hood, you're a student, you stick welded all semester long, you're ready to take some tests at the end of the semester, Go ahead and pop a new lens in there. You're going to replace a lot more of the outers than you are the inners, right? because that's the side that's being exposed to all the, all the sparks and, and soot and grime and dirt and grinding sparks. And well, if, for those of you that set your hood down like this, that's the part that's ending it all scratched up. It's like Christmas when you pop a new lens in and you can see what you're doing. Quick little pro tip here for you guys as we discuss the welding hood and how to set everything up. Get a little bit more life out of that cover lens. I have personally found this Meguiar's Plastex. It's a plastic polish and a microfiber or a shop rag. All it takes is a dot of this stuff. Take your really dirty lens like this. It's squeaky clean. So now we've got a new welding welding hood. How do we how do we make this work, right? So we start with the headgear. I want to take a look at the headgear here. There's different snaps right here. This just pops in and out and tightens back and forth. Okay. Most of you are probably going to spend a full day of welding just getting the headgear set right. You've got Two different points here, different adjustments up here. Spend a little bit of time with your welding hood. Get it comfortable. This is gonna be on your hood. This is, this is how you're making your money, right? Being able to see and being comfortable doing it. On the back of the hood, they have a, an adjustment knob. And the way this works is as you tighten it, you can hear it ratchet. It'll tighten down. When you loosen it up, it makes this bigger. This gets larger. Ratchets down to fit smaller heads. Adjust that appropriately so that it's very comfortable. You don't want it crammed on your head really tight and you don't want it so loose that it's flopping around and every time you lean down, your hood falls off your head. They do have a little back pad on there that you know keeps the back of your head pretty comfortable. Some of these you do have to pull out to make that adjustment. So it'll ratchet to tighten and when you need to loosen it, you need to actually pull this back off the top of your head. Now, most of you will have this on your head when you're making those adjustments so you get it comfortable to fit. 
there's adjustment knobs on the outside. These are what hold the headgear onto your hood. You loosen them up and it becomes really, really loose. It goes up and down very freely. So if you find yourself getting hit in the face, you might need to snug those up a little bit. If you've had your hood for a while, it might be time to replace this tiny little rubber grommet that's in here. There's a little rubber grommet, and that's what's holding the tension on your hood every time you go to use it. Well, that one's coming off a little bit differently. So, like I said, this is gonna slide out. This would be the small rubber grommet right here. If you take one of these apart, make sure you don't lose this stuff. If you lose it, you're gonna have a hard time tightening up your hood. Make sure you pay attention to the way this comes apart. All right, with this one, we can actually slide these two red tabs. We can push up on it, push the headgear in towards the hood, red tab up. And this allows us to take the headgear out. Okay, inside of our headgear, we have what's called a sweat band here. This is what catches all that, you know, nastiness in the summertime and the heat. You should change this once in a while. This is also why it's kind of disgusting to use somebody else's welding hood, because it's kind of like using their toothbrush. These get pretty gross on the inside. I'm not really sure I want to show you guys this, but well, this is one of my hoods. Gets a little bit nasty in there. You should clean it or replace it. To replace this, there's four tabs. Some of them will, will snap on. There'll be two snaps on the outside. Most of them have a tab set up like this, in which case you're going to pull the sweatband down, release it. It will actually roll back up over towards the top. And then there'll be four more tabs on the inside and you take it off the other half of those tabs. Guys, replace this once in a while, or at least take it off and wash it. If you get a lot of zits on your forehead in the summertime, it might be that you've just got nasty sweat being absorbed into your skin as your pores open up. So you can switch that. Here we've got a better look at that headgear that's on the inside. Again, you got the ratchet right there. The cushion on the backside, this is also replaceable. And if we look right here along the side of this, we have several different notches. Now these notches come off of those two red tabs. When this goes together, when you push that tab down, you can set this how far away or close to your face the welding hood is when it closes. You've got a couple of different adjustments here. Again, take some time and get comfortable Get this adjusted properly for your head. Slides in and out. You get very comfortable with where, where your headgear is sitting. But then spend some time, how far down do you want this to drop? If you're doing a lot of overhead work, you might want it to hold up a little bit higher. If you're looking down a lot, you might want it to drop a little bit lower. So we have two different adjustments we're talking about. We have the adjustment for how close to our face or far away from our face it is. If you find your hood steaming up in the summertime a lot, you can push the whole face away from you if you've got glasses or a respirator on and you find that your respirator is hitting your hood, go ahead and just push it away from your face a little bit. If any of you are gonna be doing construction work outdoors where you are required to wear a hard hat, you're gonna to have to get more comfortable with that welding hood being farther away from you as it is. So those of you that are students looking to get into the construction trades where you'll be wearing, you know, a hard hat on a daily basis. You replace this headgear with a set of clips that goes onto a hard hat. You'll put your hard hat on and the welding hood's actually then got to be out above the hard hat. So you get used to it being a little bit farther away from your face. You then have, like I said, that other adjustment here, which is going to be once it's in back and forth to your face, you can lock where it locates 
if you want it to, to drop down a little bit more or down a little bit more this way. That's all personal preference. Get comfortable. If it's dropping down a lot, you're doing a lot of work like that, you can throw an accessory on like a, like a little bib like this. This just clips in along the outside of the hood and helps prevent light or welding arc from getting up underneath your hood. If you're doing a lot of outdoor work or you're doing a lot of things like spray transfer, pulse spray, really hot processes that are getting really reflective and bouncing into your hood. They have ones that go over the back of your hood as well should the sunlight be, be shining in or if you're working around reflective materials like stainless steel or aluminum or a lot of other welders in a shop where every time you turn around, their arc is bouncing into your helmet. You can put that, that shield over the back. You'll see guys cut up a t-shirt and clip it on. And what that is, it's to, to block the light that comes in from the backside and kind of bounces around and shines into your hood. As long as we've got this part, we have a parts list in here. On the inside of the welding helmet, we've got a parts list down the side here. We have a settings guide on the other side. This tells us about where we should set our hood up for the process that we're doing. And of course, some warnings, stickers, and the auto darkening feature or ADF auto darkening filter. That's this part inside. All right, thanks for checking out the short here on how to set up your welding hood. For the rest of the video, some additional content, and to connect with the rest of us in the Weld community, download the Weld app. You'll find the rest of this video in our educational content. Go ahead, leave any comments, questions, and concerns. Connect with us directly, ask me any questions you've got. Share your pointers so that others can accelerate their learning curve to set up the hood. We'll see you over on the Weld app.